Good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Arvind Krishnan, and on behalf of EMWorks, I welcome you all to this presentation. So let me get started. The topic for today is going to be inductive proximity sensors and how EMS um, and SOLIDWORKS can help you uh, go about um, you conceptualizing and designing an inductive type sensor. Um, just before I start, a few bookkeeping items. I just want to remind you, uh, today's webinar is being recorded and a link to this recording will be sent to everybody who has been, who registered with us for this webinar. Um, and also, at the end of this webinar, we're going to have a question and answer session. So, uh, if you may enter your uh, questions in the chat window that you see in your GoToMeeting, and at the end of this webinar, I'm going to get to them and try my best to answer uh, all the questions that you had asked for. Okay. With that, uh, we will uh, commence this uh, webinar right now. All right. Uh, as I said earlier, the topic for today is going to be uh, inductive proximity uh, type of sensor. So really, what are these and, and, and what is it that EMS can help you? is what we will be looking into. Now on my screen, I wish uh, I'm, I'm sharing my screen with you. I have a SOLIDWORKS model. All I have is a plain sensor, uh, a sensor, a sensing, um, I would say a sensing system. Okay? Um, just the, uh, what you see here is a small spiral coil. Uh, this is, uh, you can uh, think of this as a PCB coil that's probably etched onto a printed circuit uh, board. Um, and it's made of obviously some kind of a conductor material like copper. Um, uh, and uh, another thing is I have some kind of a target. I see here some, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of oddly shaped, but some kind of a target. Now the whole idea is uh, this coil is being energized with some, some AC signal. Uh, think of it as an alternating current with a very high frequency of the order of several hundred kilohertz to a few megahertz possibly. Okay. Now, this, as this is being energized, um, we're going to uh, have this uh, act as a sensor. Okay? Uh, now, what is the whole concept and how do we go about doing this? Right? Um, the concept that we're going to exploit here is the, uh, what is called as the inductance of the coin. Okay? Um, when there is no... When there is no uh, uh, target in the vicinity, like like what we see here, it's the target is not directly above or or interfering with the coil. Uh, the coil exhibits certain kind of inductance. Let's say a value. It's an inherent property of the coil, and it has a certain value. All right, and uh, and the objective of this uh, coil and uh, system is is to really track the movement of this target. So I'm going to have another configuration um, which clearly tells you that something different has happened from what you saw a moment earlier. Now what you see here is this target has actually moved on top of the coil. Okay, And the objective of this coil, and, and, and we're going to call it sensor, it's just a fancy name for just a coil, is really to, um, to somehow detect this movement of the target um, right on top of the coil, like the position that you see here. So let me just go back to the old position. This is how uh, the target is normally going to be. Think of it as some kind of, of a system you're designing where if the target moves on top of this coil, I'm going to do something. That's what the purpose of the sensor is, to sense the proximity of this target. Um, and that what is that doing something? That doing something could be uh, like, triggering a circuit or, or, or making a switch on or, or switching off certain things. So it could be either way. Uh, you could probably trigger a motor. You could, you, you, could, uh, uh, you could make a light bulb go up. It could be any of these things. But the whole idea is how is this system going to understand that something different has happened? Say, look at this default position versus the position that you see here. So that's really the objective, and that's what the proximity sensor is. I'm going to take another view of this just to let you know that really nothing touches anything. The target is not touching the coil, so 
um, physically speaking, the coil really does not understand, um, you know, what happens to the target um, as far as uh, physical contact is concerned between positions one and two. So I just want to make that clear, um, uh, so that it's 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 not some kind of a mechanical sensing that we are talking about here. Okay. All right. So um, as I told you, we're going to exploit the principle of inductance. There's going to be an inductance of the coil in this default position and there is going to be hopefully an inductance change in the coil in this particular position. So let me just give you uh, a few moments to absorb this and, and if you can just conceptualize and, and, and convince yourself what is really going to happen when the target moves uh, on top of this uh, particular coil. Uh, imagine with respect to uh, the coil is still excited. It's excited with the same uh, AC signal with very high frequency. Uh, what do you expect to happen? Anyway, um, so um, if you are like uh, most people and you would be thinking that there is going to be a change in the inductance of the coil and that is exactly true and that is what um, we would be exploiting here um, to um, study uh, what's going to happen. Okay, so um, at this position there's a particular inductance associated with the coil and then at this uh, second position uh, there is going to be another inductance. The coil somehow magically is going to have a different inductance from what has happened in the first position. Now another question comes up is what really is the sign of the inductance? I mean how is it going to behave? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Uh, that's something for you to think about uh, and uh, if you want the uh, answer quickly, uh, we are going to hope that the inductance of the coil is going to fall down or going to just come decrease a bit compared to the first position. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how EMS is going to help us um, you know, design these kind of sensors and, and solve these problems. Now I, here I have a SOLIDWORKS uh, geometry, I have a simple PCB coil that I just drew out and uh, SOLIDWORKS is really no specific dimensions or anything to this. Um, it's a coil that has um, a cross section that is rectangular. It's just a spiral and it just uh, spirals about. Um, another thing is I have some metallic target as you see here and uh, the objective is really to understand uh, what happens to the coil, uh, the inductance of the coil as the target moves uh, on top of it. Okay. And to be able to do that, how does EMS figure into this picture? Now EMS is a 3D field simulation software that helps you to um, understand and calculate uh, certain parameters. For example, in this particular problem, EMS will be able to calculate the inductance of the coin at various positions of the target. EMS will be able to give you a 3D visualization of the field results. When I mean field, we are talking about the magnetic flux density, etc. EMS also is going to be able to calculate the induced currents, uh, say on the target, as it moves from, say, position A to position. Now, these are some of the things that EMS as a 3D uh, field simulation, uh, electromagnetic field simulation software is going to provide you with. And today we are going to see how one can do a simulation using EMS. Now, um, just an explanation of what really happens to the inductance, just for your curiosity, why would it decrease as the target moves, say, from this current position um, to this position? Now, basically, it all has to do with um, what is called as eddy currents that are induced in the target. You have an alternating change uh, in the uh, flux because there's an AC current in the coil, and this uh, rapidly changing flux induces eddy currents on um, any conductor material that's on the vicinity, most uh, like if something is right on top of this coil, as you see here, there's going to be um, some amount of eddy currents induced in this uh, target, and this eddy current is is induced in such a way that it opposes the flux that causes it. So there's actually going to be, as far as the uh, coil is concerned, it's going to see a re reduction of of, of the flux it's really going to see and that reflects on its inductance and that's really what's happening and that's the physics uh, principle that we're going to exploit to design this uh, particular um, uh, coil uh, sensor. 
Okay, so let's get back here and uh, see how a simulation is done in EMS. Now, um, the first thing that uh, to do an EMS simulation, for example, to compute the inductance of a coil, um, we do what is known as an EMS study. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, and create an EMS study. Now, in an EMS study, we have several different study options. As I said earlier, we're going to have AC uh, an AC current through this coil. So it's, we're going to have an AC magnetic uh, um, this one. Uh, and also, we're going to specify what's the frequency. And now the the whole idea is really um, these coils are energized at a very high frequency, and that uh, creates enough uh, eddy currents, and that's going to um, uh, uh, make a change in the inductance. And now I just want to let you know that it doesn't work for any target. This principle that 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 uh, I just uh, told you, uh, I assume the target to be of some conductor material. It needs to be some conductor material. You know, there has to be some amount of element of conductivity. Uh, in fact, a good conductor is certainly a much better, uh, uh, much better candidate for this particular sensor arrangement. Okay, so we are going to assume this to be copper, just like the coil. So it's a conductor. It could be any other conductor. It could be aluminum. It could be steel. As long as it's a good conductor, um, uh, that's what is important. Uh, Okay, if it is a plastic, if it is rubber, uh, the target, uh, this whole concept breaks down, it's really not going to work. Okay. So let's assume that the frequency to be 1 megahertz, so I'm going to put 1 e to the 6 hertz, and uh, we can now uh, create a EMS study. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, create an EMS study. Once you create an EMS study, we have to apply materials to the different components. Okay. Now, as I said, both the movable target and uh, the coil can be made of the same material. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and apply material. Um, EMS comes with its own prepackaged material library, as you see here. Now, I can go ahead and choose the conductor material. I can select copper. Um, all EMS materials come up with its own properties. For example, we have conductor materials. We have uh, cable materials. We have ceramics. We have ferromagnetic materials. We have steels, etc. cetera. Um, and this is a fully customizable material library, which means that you could actually um, uh, create your own materials and use that for simulation. So I'm going to just apply material of copper to these two um, Uh, components. Okay, so after you do that, there's also another uh, uh, component that I've purposefully hidden here. Uh, that is also a very important part of this uh, simulation. That's the air space around um, the coil and the uh, uh, the target that you see here. Okay, and that is also needs to be created inside SolidWorks. Now this is the air region. Uh, and why is it uh, that we need the air region? Just simply because the magnetic flux density, the flux, the B field, uh, is going to exist in the air around uh, the, the coil. And, and to be able to capture that, one needs to be able to model that. And that um, is, is really the last thing that is in our model. And I'm going to go ahead and hide it because we just went over it. And uh, we're going to apply uh, a, a material air uh, to this particular component. And as I said earlier, we can go ahead and apply uh, copper from my favorite materials. So once the materials are done, uh, there is just one more thing that needs to be done as far as EMS is concerned, is to be able to turn on the AD effects. So let's go ahead and turn on the AD effects in the movable target. Okay? And this is important because it allows EMS to calculate the AD currents that are uh, created uh, in the target. Now, um, now we have to create uh, what is known as the coil. So creating a coil uh, is extremely simple in EMS. Uh, we create a coil. In this case, it's a solid coil. We select the material, uh, the, the, the CAD model that is really responsible um, for the coil. We select where the current comes in, uh, what we call as the entry port. We zoom into that uh, rectangular cross section. And we also, you can see here, uh, let me just decrease it. You can see here uh, the direction of the current. And uh, where do the current, where does the current actually exit out of the coil is this particular port. So now um, the, the, uh, the definition of the coil as far as selecting uh, is concerned is, is completed. 
Now, uh, this coil, we have to specify what is the RMS value of the current, what is the frequency we already specified. So let's uh, just make a make up a current value. So we, we put a current to this particular coil. Now, once a current is assigned to this coil, um, we are now ready to go ahead and do the simulation. Okay? EMS exploits what is known as a finite element method to do this simulation and it creates what is known as a finite element mesh. So let me revert back to a study that I had already created very similar to the one that I showed you um, where I, I, I've solved it and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the mesh. Okay? Now this is the finite element mesh that is created by EMS. Okay? EMS has an automatic mesh generation uh, capability which uh, uh, creates a finite element mesh and uh, that allows you to solve. Nevertheless, EMS also allows you to have a mesh control. So you can uh, you can specify regions in your model where you want to have more mesh elements and regions in your model where you have less elements. And for uh, those of you who are wondering if indeed the air that I showed you is, is, is being meshed, uh, the answer is yes. Even the uh, air region that we saw is being meshed uh, by EMS. So to go ahead and just look at the uh, mesh of the coil and the uh, target, you can just go ahead and hide the air region. So now this is the finite element mesh um, created uh, by EMS automatically. Okay. Now once the meshing is done, we go ahead and solve this uh, simulation and we are now ready to take a look at some of the results. Okay. Now what are the results that is of importance to us? Let's recap. Uh, we, we did say uh, earlier that uh, the best uh, uh, indicator is going to be the inductance. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the inductance. So EMS gives you automatically the inductance of the coil. Please take a note of this one. It's, it's about 1.27 um, e to the minus 6 Henry's. Okay, the, the default unit for inductance as you see here is Henry. Um, so we are talking about uh, uh, micro Henry. So we are talking about 1.27 micro Henry is really the inductance of the coil uh, when the target is, is a little away from the coil. Okay. Now we are going to compare and contrast this to another scenario. We'll go ahead and activate the configuration where we have the target right on top of the coil. Now EMS allows you to do this what if comparison. You, you can change your geometry as you saw here or you can change materials, you can change many things, the excitation, your frequency and see how these things affect your results. So um, that's why it makes it uh, a parameterized uh, solution uh, where you can uh, you can change many things and, and see how your result varies. Okay? Now everything else is, uh, is, is really the same. The coil and the target, they're made of the same materials. The air region is there. Um, the coil is excited as before, um, and and the finite element mesh is created. Now uh, the only thing that should be different is the inductance. Okay, and now you see here uh, we had about 1.27 uh, micro Henry. Uh, contrast that with about 1.06. That's close to one micro Henry. There is a difference, a substantial difference in, in, in the inductance in terms of uh, uh, micro Henry's and which could actually be exploited to understand uh, and make the sensor work. Okay, um, So uh, this difference in inductance could be exploited using another circuit to which this PCB coil is connected and, and this circuit now uh, can exploit this change in inductance and, and you would know that the change in inductance has been caused because of this target approaching uh, the coil. Um, so um, we can uh, compare uh, the inductance of, of both my uh, scenarios. So we have study one where we have about 1.27 micro Henry and in study two we have about 1.06 micro Henry and this difference can occur. In addition to the inductance EMS compares the flux linkage, it computes the impedance, uh, it computes the uh, induced voltage, the losses, etc. So there's really a lot of things that EMS does compare. And another thing that might be of interest is really the resistance, the DC resistance of the coil. These are some of the outputs you get um, uh, uh, in EMS. Okay? But the main thing is the inductance and that and we are able to get that. Now let's uh, focus uh, back on 
on the 3D field simulation. So as I said earlier, I'm going to go back to my previous uh, configuration where I'm go I have this uh, target a little away. And let us now take a look at how the 3D results are. You know, as I said, it's a 3D field simulation software. So you can qualitatively look at what is happening. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, show back at, okay, uh, because we're going to be interested in flux here. So, uh, and I'm going to plot the magnetic flux density as a vector. Now, as you see here, really this is uh, what happens to the flux uh, from the coil. You see here the maximum flux region is in the center, understandably slow. The, the, the coil actually concentrates on most of the flux there and, and it loops around and uh, you can see here uh, the magnetic flux due to this coil. Um, whatever little uh, influence this uh, copper target has is, is, is very little. There is actually and as you can see here uh, there is a slight uh, uh, difference in the behavior of the flux in and around this copper coil but nevertheless it's not major enough to affect uh, uh, the the flux, the majority of the flux that goes through the uh, center. Now you may want to contrast this with uh, what really happens when I have um, the target right uh, sitting right on top of the uh, coil. Now you can see the flux in the center is extremely different than what we saw so earlier, this pattern of difference and you can see that the flux tends to just move away from the center uh, more towards uh, the extremities of the target as you see here. Um, obviously the maximum value has changed and also the uh, it's a vector quantity and, and, and even the whole distribution looks very different. Okay, So as far as the coil is concerned it really sees something different um, and, and that affects its, its inductance, which, uh, hence the change. And um, you can see here uh, the flux clearly, uh, the flux lines looking uh, extremely different than what we saw before. And this is the qualitative uh, study that EMS permits you uh, to do uh, in your designs and all. Okay, and uh, really the, the, the fundamental thing that is bringing about the change in flux as I told you is the induced currents or the eddy currents on the target and this eddy current has the tendency to oppose the flux and you can see here the eddy currents um, and EMS helps you to visualize these eddy currents. So let's uh, take a look at the eddy currents um, on the um, target. You can see here the direction, uh, the vector direction of the eddy currents as I zoom in. It really has a sense if you if you take your right hand, right hand and have a have your uh, fingers call uh, circle around uh, through this uh, vectors. As you see here, you can see the direction of the flux due to this eddy current and that clearly opposes the flux coming from the coil and uh, this is what is uh, causing a change in the inductance. So you can see here um, how the eddy currents um, are distributed in the coil and also the, 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 the value of the eddy currents. Because of the high frequency the eddy currents tend to stick to the surface of the target and uh, due to what is known as a skin effect that EMS has the ability to capture the skin effect as well. Um, so uh, this is uh, really in a, uh, in a nutshell uh, what we wanted to cover here is the uh, ability for you to design these kind of uh, inductive sensors. Um, basically these are coil coupled with uh, uh, conductor materials close by and how that affects your um, inductance. Now um, with this uh, we really uh, come to an end of this uh, small demonstration um, that I put together um, for you as to how EMS can uh, help you uh, design and simulate and understand what really happens in your detective uh, sensing uh, designs or sensing technologies. Uh, with this, um, you know, I would uh, take the time now to answer some of the questions that uh, some of you had asked um, and see a few of them. Um, the first question is, is how does the material of the target affects the flux? Absolutely, as I said earlier, 
uh, the it has to be a conductor material. You know, if you have rubber or plastic, this really is not going to work. So you need to have a conductive material as a target. So it does affect. Uh, it's not just the AC current, but it's also the material of the target. You're right on that. Now, uh, what different types of coils does EMS have? Could one have a circular wire instead of a PCB coil? Would EMS be able to mesh it? Um, as long as you are able to create a coil in SOLIDWORKS, EMS will be able to mesh and do the simulation. Um, there are also many other techniques of creating coils that uh, we will not be covering here, but uh, if you are interested, we would uh, like you to uh, go to our website, uh, emworks.com, and uh, we we have um, a program by which uh, interested users can download our software free for trial for 15 days uh, with uh, full uh, uh, support and uh, we will be happy to uh, you know uh, provide you with uh, the required uh, support and expertise for you to uh, solve these uh, types of problems yes um, technically anything that you can draw in SOLIDWORKS can be meshed and analyzed in EMS so uh, different kinds of coils. It doesn't really need to be PCB coils. It can be wound coils. It could be um, any of those uh, those things. And there's actually a much better way of doing wound coils that you might find in some of our videos in the YouTube uh, channel um, that you can use uh, to um, do this uh, do your simulations. Now there's another question is does EMS has the ability to simulate force generated by a coil of a brushless motor? Absolutely yes. Um, what we just uh, discussed today is a really a small part of the um, functionality of EMS. EMS is a general purpose um, finite element uh, software um, and uh, in EMS uh, you can uh, desire, you, you can simulate motors uh, and it will be uh, you can compute the torque and the forces, etc., um, of of your uh, electrical devices. So yeah, it is possible to do that. Uh, so uh, what I'm having right now is the EMWorks webpage, um, uh, and uh, we will be happy uh, if you if if you want to. Uh, get a trial of the software, you can just go to ready for the trial. All we ask you is an email so that we send you a link to download the software. You can select the EMS product and you can submit it. And uh, these trials come for about two weeks and we will provide you with uh, the technical support also during this time period. As you see here, as far as the EMS applications are concerned, um, it's a general purpose 3D field simulation software. So if you're designing electrical machines like motors, generators, by all means, this is a tool that uh, you can use to study what's happening. Uh, you can have magnetic uh, arrays. Uh, you can design solenoids. You can design sensors like the inductive ones that we saw today. Um, and uh, and the EMWorks uh, products also encompass high frequency RF and microwave solutions as well. So if you are designing um, Passive components, microwave and RF components like filters, resonators, uh, connectors, transmission lines, antennas, etc. We have products that help you to do that as well. Uh, now, um, with that, we come to an end of uh, today's uh, presentation. And on behalf of uh, EMWorks, I thank you all for participating in today's webinar. Um, uh, we will be happy to send you a recording to this webinar soon and you can actually uh, share it with your colleagues and friends um, if they had missed uh, today's webinar and it will also be in, the, in our EMS uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, I thank you all and uh, I would like to end uh, today's uh, webinar. Thank you very much and have a nice day.